Join Twins K.N. Olu Taiwu, featured authors and speakers, receive keys that will unlock the door to your discovery of purpose. This is your date with destiny. Welcome to the Vision Guided Life. I'm Olu Taiwu. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to bring to your attention what we're seeing in our society today and my brother and I discuss identity. K. What do you have to say about this? So it's such an important subject in our day. This day and age, identity is critical because if you don't know who you are, you won't know where you're going. And anyone can introduce a path for you to take, and it may be destructive. So you ought to be grounded in your God-given identity. More than ever before, I think it's very crucial that every person who names the name of Christ understand who they are. Yeah understand their identity because we live in a world that's constantly redefining concepts. Yeah. They define man, a man is this today and tomorrow they, they try to change it, leaving confused people, confused young people who are coming up. Yeah. And so therefore we have to have something, a grounding. Yeah. Would you say so? Yeah. Absolutely. Grounded in Christ. And when we are grounded in Christ, then when voices of the world come and attach, want to attach themselves to us, we can clearly identify what they are and dispel them from amongst us and um, around us in our surroundings. And that's why we we talked about this and we wrote a book called Uncovering the Hidden Stranger Within, answering the question of identity because it's a question that must be answered because if you don't get the right answer from a biblical perspective, there are voices waiting for you yeah. to redefine mm -hmm. who you are. And that's why we've said it often that four voices testify about us on this planet. Number one, the voice of God, Satan, the voice of the world around us, and the voice of self. The voice we embrace becomes our own. Mm. Can you expand on that? Absolutely. I think they're, 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 when you listed those, we've listed it in our book, and we've repeated it time and time again on other programs in different formats. But as you just said it, it hit me that the voice of self in many ways is at the mercy of the voice of the world. And the voice of the world today, it's more, uh, what, what I'll put it, it's very, it fluctuates, it changes the system, the voices, the what they want to impart into the minds of people and corrupt people from a young age is at a critical pace today. And when I say critical pace, it's vastly changing rapid, rapidly in a way rapidly. that is, it's, it's mind-boggling. So when we wrote this book years ago, the import and the impact of that book, if grass, is more relevant today than any time before. Yes, and what I'm seeing also when we talk about the subject of identity, the cunning craftiness of the world today is to define things open-endedly. Yeah. How, what do I mean by that? I mean, they don't have a fixed foundation upon which they build the concept of identity. It's very fluid yeah. so that you can redefine it yeah. a week from now. Yeah. You can redefine it. A month from now, a year from now, you can redefine it. Yeah. So it gives them the leeway to to define mm -hmm. and redefine yeah. and creating confusion. Yeah, that's so true. And you, what you see in that very mindset, a frame of reference that the world does where it's not fixed and it's constantly shifting, if you are not grounded in the Word of God, guess what? You are going to be a victim as they change and redefine and change and redefine. There's no foundational basis for what they're doing. So you really are shifting with times if you're not grounded in the Word of God. The Word of God is fixed. So if we're, if we're grounded in, in the Word of God, when things around us are moving, we're not going to be impacted in such a negative way. Absolutely. And I just think of a scripture in Matthew chapter 16. Jesus has this exchange in the Caesarea Philippi. Matthew 16, verse 13 says, When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now look at verse 14. So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now look at Jesus' response in verse 17. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. In other words, when Peter got the answer right, Jesus points 
to a source outside of mm. the world system. He says, my father, he didn't say, say my father, just in case you thought he's talking about Joseph, my mm -hmm. father, which is in heaven. In other words, it's out of the, 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 the realm of this earth that does not define who I am. Yeah. I don't draw my sense of identity from the, the world that is uh, taste, touch, feel, yeah. so on and so forth. It comes from an outside realm, outside of time, outside of any uh, fault that mm -hmm. this world has. Yes, absolutely. That's powerful. And that's why, though, even Jesus, how Jesus spoke is uh, 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 it's an indication, is light into how we ought to think. Because if Jesus' kingdom is not limited to time and space in this world, that, that means that anything that is defined under the heavens, <laughs> as so to speak, is limited and it's temporal. Really, when you get a perspective outside of this realm, you get a divine perspective that supersedes what the world has to offer. And that's when you know, and you know clearly, because the scripture articulates very clearly who you are and what you should be about. The purpose that God gives you defines you, not the world around you. Absolutely. And I wanted to even echo what my brother just said there. And that's why I want also, just as we talk about Jesus, because the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. The same way Jesus asked those questions, I want to pose the same question to you. Have you ever asked yourself, uh, asked yourself this question, who do men say that I am? As a child of God, have you made an assessment of what they are saying about you? But don't stop there. Now I want to ask you the next question, a follow-up question. Who do you say that you are? And when you answer that question, make sure, make sure you'll be able to identify your answer the way Jesus identified his, the way Jesus pointed out who his source was. If your answer doesn't match the answer of Jesus in terms of where the source of who you are, uh, who defines you, then you have a problem. If when you are answering that question, your reference is the world around you and not Christ himself, you know you've missed it. That's true. That's true. And that's why it's critical. These things look so basic, but not many people seem to understand the yeah. import of yeah. this message. Yeah. And that's why we have to raise our consciousness about the Word of God. We have to understand that God has a plan for us, and His plan does not change. Even if the world decides to change its definition of things, the plan of God never changes. And therefore, if we get our marching orders from God, we're on a safe and firm foundation. And that's why the four voices that testify about us, the most crucial voice is the voice of God and what we do with the voice of God. Absolutely. That voice that we embrace becomes our reality. And so we need to embrace the voice of God that it will now impact the voice of self. And that's what we will be grounded in. So that even if we seem to falter, we can rely and rest back on the voice of God that is, gives us a true foundation a true sense of security. Absolutely. Because if you look further, when Jesus answered that question about his identity, when he pointed, he pointed Peter to the source, he says, my father in heaven revealed that to you. And he says, upon this rock of revelation, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I want you to see what Peter says. Peter, in talking about buildings, look at what he says and how he describes us in First Peter chapter 2, verse 4 through 7. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also as living stones are being built up, a spiritual house, a holy priest priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. I'll stop at that, at that verse. What you see there, we are looked at from Scripture as living stones. So this great Jesus, when he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. And we are the pieces, the living stones that he is building. Mm -hmm. But if we don't understand who we are, we can't submit to his building. We begin to look at the world and the world begins to build us. Yeah. And we know what the outcome of the world building us yes. does. That's true. And it, is, it leaves a person in a world of pain. We yeah. allow I mean, what we're seeing here, when we wrote the book, Uncovering the Hidden Stranger Within, Answering the Question of Identity, at the time, it, it was very relevant, and we had the 
New York uh, surroundings that we were living in at the time in mind when we wrote it, and we saw the impact it had there. But as you look at our world today, Everything we talked about in that book is relevant. We talked about the uh, the evolution question, yeah. how people define things from an evolutionary standpoint. But our world today is has embraced an evolutionary standpoint, and they have disregarded the God factor in our society. The God yes. factor in our society is pretty much non-existent today because people, if you look at society, uh, news programs, they would sometime in the past, bring in clergy to talk about they never bring out clergy today. You don't see that. Yes, because it's not accidental. It's very much intentional. They want to eradicate, erase the footprint of the church in society. Even the government fights, <laughs> you know, the Christian message and even puts a Christian uh, uh, prayer and stuff like that. They sort of put it on the, on the, on the people buying Bibles. It's on some kind of a, a surveillance uh platform that they're looking at who are the people so what does that tell you that our society it thinks it can do without god yes the world economic forum they don't want god in picture they want to do a world reset and so if you don't know who you are in christ you are going to be a victim it's not even a matter of what you uh, intentionally want to do things that happen incidentally and accidental can become your reality if you don't know who you are in christ and you're not grounded and it's not a once and for done deal where you say, yeah, I know who I am. No, you have to always revisit what the scripture says about you and reinforce. It's like an alignment thing. You're driving a car and it's out of alignment. You have to do will alignment and balance it of your tires, right? And so you say, oh, I did it three months ago. I did it a year ago. That doesn't have relevance for the real, the here and now. You have to go and check and realign if you have to. And that's exactly the same way with the scriptures. We have to align ourselves constantly, do checks, and make sure that we are standing on the word of God and not shifting with the change in our times. It's true. I love what you just said there. The, the reference point is the word of God because the word of God is the foundation. The Bible says he upholds all things by the word of his power. So which means if we are to be upheld, it's by the word of his power. Yeah. The moment we say the word will not uphold us, we become a victim yeah. of society. Yeah. All the, the, the definitions, the redefinitions, yeah. and they're trying to box us in. Yeah. And that's what they're trying to divide yeah. and conquer. That's what they do. Yes. In, even in the United States with the Johnson Amendment, what it did was try to, to uh, kind of put a gauge on the uh, clergy so they don't speak on certain issues. Yeah. To change, they, they, they try all kinds of things. Yeah. And and that's where the root of persecution comes yeah. in. And maybe you can segue into that. Yes. How does persecution, the, if you stand for who God has defined you, what is the impact in society? If you stand for what God, uh, how God defines you, and the world is shifting farther and farther, a lot of the world, it, the world is saying, I'm the world. You know, let's consider this Christian message and this Christian ideology. No, as you are standing firmly on the Word of God, the world is shifting farther and farther away from the Word of God to a point where it's not, it doesn't even make sense. I don't think God wants us, because we embrace Christ, He wants us to part ways with our intellect. No, no. He gave us a brain for a reason. A brain is important. That's why God gave us a brain. But Ultimately, we are not loyal to the conclusions of what our brains tell us when they're in opposition to the Word of God. That said, the brain should be employed here to some degree. And that's to say that when the world is doing something and moving farther and farther away from God, we ought to renew our minds so that we can embrace what God is saying about us. But because we take a stand, that itself puts us at odds with the world which will cause persecution. Because if we are saying yes is yes and no is no, and the world is saying is neither, then there's going to be a problem. Absolutely. I, 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 in fact, I want our viewers to see this clip. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? Not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The meaning of the word woman is so unclear and controversial that you can't give me a definition? Senator, in my work as a judge, what I do is I address disputes. If there's a dispute about a definition, 
people make arguments and I look at the right. law and I decide. Well, so I'm not. The fact that you can't give me a straight answer about something as fundamental as what a woman is underscores the dangers of the kind of progressive education that we are hearing about. You can see, look at this simple question that was asked this uh, justice who was uh, being who was going to be confirmed as we're going through the, the process and uh, she could not answer a basic question that we've known for millennia we've known the definition of who a woman is what a man is and that's where we've come in society it's come to a point that very high level intellectual and the highest went to the best schools in the country asked basic questions because our society has tried to redefine these terms they now try to play along okay what do you have to say about that and that's true when you redefine a thing then you can conquer that thing if a person embraces a redefinition of who they are that person now can be you can exercise authority over that person but when you hear someone define you and it doesn't align with how you know who you are then you can push back. So that means that there has to be a reference. There always has to be a reference to accept or reject what you hear. Yeah. If there's no reference, then you yes. are afraid. And that's why it becomes very problematic when I said the definitions are fluid to the point where there's no fixed point. Mm -hmm. And they do that on purpose. A cunningly devised system yeah. that you, you are making it so fluid that you can at any point define or redefine. It also puts up opportunities where people can actually use concepts of definition to say you oppressed it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think they on that. Yes. There are questions where somebody was defining who a man was and what a woman was. And this lady actually came before Congress and was saying that you are actually pro promoting violence against a certain people because you, you say a man is a man and a woman is a woman. You've referred to people with a capacity for pregnancy. It, would that be women? Many women, cis women, have the capacity for pregnancy. Many cis women do not have the capacity for pregnancy. Um, there are also trans men who are capable of pregnancy, as well as non-binary people who are capable of pregnancy. So um, I want to recognize that your line of questioning um, is transphobic, <laughs> um, and it opens up trans people to violence by not recognizing that. Wow, you're saying that I'm opening up people to violence by asking whether or not women are the folks who can have pregnancy for, because for of my us. line of questioning? Because, so we can't talk about it? Because denying that trans people exist and pretending not to know that they exist I'm is denying dangerous. that trans people exist by asking are you? you if you're talking are you? about women are you? having pregnancies. Do you believe that there, uh, men can get pregnant? No, I don't think women can get <laughs> So you are pregnant. denying that trans people exist? Thank and that leads to violence? Is this how you run your classroom? But that's when we come back to the society that we live in today. Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible to the point that it's like, what does the future hold? If this is the uh, track that the world is going, where are we going to be three, four, five years from now? It means what world with the children yeah. grow up? Yeah. What concept? And that's why it's critical and then that we have a biblical worldview. The church has to step it up. And this is where the problem sometimes lies, that the church thinks that, oh, we bury our head in the sand and we don't want to engage in what's political around us. But if you don't engage now, you're going to engage at some form Absolutely. leader. Absolutely. And it doesn't mean you become a politician or you, you put the word of God aside and you so, get so engrossed in politics. No. It means that you become wise about what's going on around you. You become a son of, like a son of Issachar who knew the times and knew what Israel ought to do. We have to employ wisdom because we may be grounded today, but what are our children and our children's children going to do? Oh, that is with oh, pow. And so we have yeah. to have a strong foundation in the scripture and create a system that the word of God becomes accessible, understood, and readily available to people so that it becomes, sadly to say, an alternative. You know what I mean by alternative? That means that it's no longer the mainstay of our society. It's almost like one of the multiple choices that they have. And that's sad. We used to be more in a dominant position as a body of Christ, but it's clear that we have gone more secular in our day and age. Yes, and I do, I do feel that it's come to a time where we have to come out of the four walls yeah. of our buildings. Precisely. The technologies, AI, is, is now pretty, I mean, it's, it's become a mainstay. And rather than always play catch up, it is time for the church to wake up yeah. and 
take advantage of these technologies, and in some cases, even be pioneers yeah. of new technologies yeah. so that we can get the gospel in, speak the language of the times without compromising the message, yeah. but identifying where do the young people consult, what, what platforms do they go to, and tailor our messages to those platforms, yes. or else we, the generations will be lost. It's very important what you just said, and even talking about AI, recently in the news, we hear about Google Gemini. Oh, boy. And uh, how they are, they use their bias to create. So AI, artificial intelligence is what that means. While it says it's artificial intelligence, as though it's an independent uh, mechanism, <laughs> there are, it's what you feed in that's going to set junk the in, junk parameters. Out. Yeah, junk in, junk out. It set the parameters for how it functions. So if junk is poured in, if wokeism is poured in, if... Uh, uh, anti-God concept is poured in, uh, poured in as its foundation, that's what's going to come out. And therefore, this is where I say multiple choices, an option. If you are totally absent from these platforms, then what if this is the trend and this is the direction we're going to be going into and the, the, the body of Christ is not there to be one of the options that people have as multiple choices, then you have a problem. Yeah. And so the artificial intelligence at the root of it too are secular-minded people that want to take us farther and farther away from God. It's not like these people with their multi-billions of dollars are putting in a platform and saying, you know what, we want to educate the masses and we want to bring an awareness of God. Mm -hmm. That's not what they're all about. It. It's secular. It's almost like what they're really saying is that we can function without God. Yeah. We can be so intelligent that we don't even need God. We can function at our maximum, our fullest potential without God. But when we look at what happened in 2020 with the pandemic, you can see that that is a problem yeah. because people were more attached to the, to technology, but the suicide rate went up. Yeah. So what does that tell you? Tell that, you that they need God. They need God. The void that is inside man cannot be filled by technology. Yes, but I want to go back to what you said about the Gemini. Can you break down what actually happened? Basically, How does it tie into identity? Basically, talk about identity. It's almost like the Gemini, Google Gemini, erased white people. So if people search something, it gave alternative. Even historical even figures. Even historical figures. George Washington, uh, some other uh, historical figures. Vikings. Vikings, period. And we'll show this on, on TV so people can see what we're talking about. And this is what they were trying to do. So it's part of that DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion concept. But in doing that, it pretty much targets a particular race, white, and kind of debases that race totally to elevate others. And that cannot be of God because God sees everyone the same. You can't try to put others down to elevate others. Yeah. You have to treat, to, to, to bring other people up. You bring them up, find their deficits, and raise their help them raise their value, how they see themselves, but you don't take others down to raise other people up. That's not the way God that, that's act, Absolutely not. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And when God demonstrated his love through Jesus Christ, it wasn't on the basis of color. It was his basis on the image of God because we're made in the image of God. Black, white, yellow, green, whatever color. God doesn't look at color. God looks at the image, his image that was imprinted upon our spirit. And that's why he sent his son to die for us, to redeem us, to bring us back to his original intention. Yes. So every input that the world does today you cannot rely on what they're doing, what they're saying, or what their intention is as the basis for your identity and value. Even uh, Apple did a Apple kind of, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, gobbles where Visual Pro. It, uh, it's like we're almost $3,500. And there are people literally walking around the street, crossing the road with those things on and making hand gestures based on what's on the screen. You know, that's the kind of world, a virtual world is where we're heading. And some people take, attach their esteems to these technologies. Yeah. And really, it's not going to satisfy in the end. If you don't build yourself up, you're going to be hollow on the inside while having all these gadgetry on the outside. They won't fulfill 
your esteem. Your esteem is an internal, uh, it comes from inside based on filling a void that only Jesus can fill. It is no substitute for that. When you put in a substitute, it will malfunction at some point. Yes, it will. Well, I want to read this scripture in conclusion. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 says, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. So he is the source. We are being built up. Yeah. So we must be rooted with him, which must look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. Not just the author, but the finisher. Yes. I like that. Please repeat that. Emphasize that. Please. We must look to Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. Many people started well by believing in Jesus initially, but have not looked to him as the finisher of the faith. So while he started their journey, they begin to look to other sources to accomplish self-esteem issues, loneliness, depression. It looks to outside sources. But the same Jesus that started your faith is the one that enables your faith and the one that accomplishes your faith in the end. So we need to look to him. And the more we look to him, the more of ourselves we see in the accurate focus. So it's very crucial that we revisit the concept, the revisit it in our lifestyle Jesus being our source. Wow. That's so, 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 so powerful. I pray that people, as you're listening to this, that you will internalize what God is saying in his word and seeing the importance of being firmly grounded in what Jesus has done. The finished work of Jesus is what's going to complete you in the end, not what men do, not how sophisticated technology gets, not artificial intelligence or some mechanism that the world prescribes. It may give you a, a, a temporary high, and it probably does, but it won't last. And therefore, we are coming with a message that is different from that. We're coming with a message on identity, an identity found in Christ, your sure foundation. We want to thank you for tuning in to the Vision Guided Life. Where we're convinced that you've been blessed. And remember this. Transformation takes place through identification with Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Remember to like, subscribe, and click on the bell so you will never miss any episode from our channel. God bless you.